So real quick before I get started here, I wanted to address something um, minor but still possibly important for the future. Uh, luckily for me, the last video that I did uh, featured a band called The Bullies, and they have a pretty good following in my understanding. And I had quite a few views all of a sudden pop up on, on one of my videos, which 36 views at the time of recording is a lot of views to me, just so we're all clear, because I never really got to count how many listeners we had when we were doing a, you know, a different podcast or you know, on anything podcast related that I've done, because it's all been on an app, iTunes or Google Play or whatever podcast that you listen to. So luckily for me, YouTube gives me all of the demographics that I have listening to me and all of the, the totals that people are listening to as far as how long. But anyways, I was asked uh, why I'm not putting in at least a small clip of some of the songs that I am talking about so that the listeners can kind of understand and pick up my description of them. And it's mainly because I don't want to deal with the possibility of YouTube copyright flagging me. Um, even though I'm trying to push uh, listeners to the band and not claiming any rights to any of the music that I would be playing or listening to, I just, a part of me doesn't want to deal with it yet. And maybe if, uh, you know, I continue to grow the channel and people become more interested in hearing my opinion on it, then cool. I'll, I'll try to do that and maybe we can do a little bit more research in and how many uh, seconds I can play without <laughs> receiving a flag, which I think it's only 30 uh, and to me, sometimes when I'm talking about uh, songs, 30 seconds is not really enough because I, I used to say you know, to people when I'm trying to describe a song to or suggesting music to that you should listen to at least a minute and a half of a song before you decide to change it or skip it. And, uh, you know, that's kind of something I still live by before I decide, eh, you know, I don't like this or, you know, I, I want to skip over the song and go to the next one. Uh, because to me, I'm not a top 40 guy, as you guys know, so I don't necessarily need the first 30 seconds to really slap me in the face. And I know what you're thinking. Well, why don't you just edit in the 30 seconds that you really like? Well, again, I just I don't want to deal with the flags of, of copyright. So anyways, uh, if you're listening, thank you so much. Uh, check out my other videos. They're both kind of, now that I kind of realize this, they are in the same genre, and I'm going to try to space out from that uh, with the following you know, videos after this, uh, but uh, I'm a noise rock guy, you know, I, I'm a metalhead too, so I kind of push towards those types of genres, but I'm trying to branch out, and that's exactly what happened with this video, so without further ado, my name is Vox, thank you so much for listening, this is Over Opinionated, the music podcast. <laughs> So I don't know about anyone else, but I am a hipster in uh, all sorts of the ways that hipsters, hip hipsters, hipsters can be uh, described. And I like to collect a lot of things as well. So being a hipster and having a collection fetish, if you will, uh, can get me in a little bit of trouble. But that is okay as long as you don't spend your rent on whatever you're trying to collect. <laughs> For me, uh, one of my favorite things to collect and uh, display in my house is uh, my vinyl collection. And I got, I was fortunate enough to have some uh, friends give me some, and uh, I was able to, when I moved out of my parents' place, snag um, the majority of their vinyl collection because, let's be real, they haven't listened to it since, you know, a decade before I was born. So, yeah. I was able to, to snag that and have some pretty cool vintage pieces in my collection. But for those who don't know, if you're a vinyl collector, there's an awesome subscription service. And uh, I know you're probably rolling your eyes at it, but I've been a um, subscriber to Loot Crate for uh, on and off for the past couple of years. And I usually just target the, the crates that interested me theme-wise, but they had a deal and I, I bought a year's worth. But without getting into that, uh, style of things. There's <laughs> a Loot Crate-esque uh, subscription service for vinyl collector, collect, collectors. My God, I'm stumbling over my tongue today. Uh, and it's called Vinyl, believe it or not. It's spelled V 
NYL, so abbreviated for the hipster crew that's uh, trying to stay uh, modern, I guess. And I figured I would look into this after I saw it's been advertised for me for about a year as well, and I kind of pushed it off, pushed it off, but. I find myself like crate digging recently. Every time I go on vacation somewhere to a different city, I go to a record store and um, my girlfriend and I dig through a bunch of records for like an hour. And if we find a good deal, we always snag something to have in our collection. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to subscribe. So today is kind of a music review, but also a subscription service review of things that have to do with music. And I really hope you enjoy and think about maybe this may be something you want to go to or maybe not. I don't know. For the first um, subs- subscription, I got a little bit of a deal on it. And I think it was just like a end-of-the-year deal or a New Year's deal, whatever it may be. But it's normally, I think, thirty nine ninety nine a month. And you get three records. And you can choose... Uh, a bunch of from a bunch of of genres and what you do on your profile when you create one is you kind of tell people like what you want to listen to what you're uh, mainly listening to what you don't want to listen to and stuff that you'd be interested in listening to and I think there's like a list of 20 different genres that you can uh, choose from or you could do uh, the thing that I did which is curated it's a package that they have that they see what you buy and see what you listen to um, via Spotify and um, Discogs, which is a website that uh, I use frequently, actually for um, it's for buying and selling anything disc related. So from I don't know CDs, vinyl, DVDs, stuff like that. Uh, and I've gotten some really cool deals on some stuff that I've been watching for a while on Amazon and eBay but it wasn't going to, you know, drop the cash to buy it. And I got, you know, sure, if they're used, but to me that just kind of uh, throws character, as long as it's playable, I guess, into whatever you're buying. So uh, it wasn't supposed to be here until Thursday, but I got it actually on Monday, which is why I didn't post a, uh, a show on Monday for those who are listening uh, the week this comes out. If you're listening to this way down the road, doesn't matter to you, but, you know, that's just the timeline here, so... Here we are Tuesday. I kind of dug through last night uh, the three records that I got. I listened to them all and kind of wrote my thoughts on them as well as what I thought about this service. So the cool part is is it comes in this, well, it's cool, but it made me kind of nervous because it was sitting on my porch all day. It's this bright pink um, or red, I don't know if I'm colorblind, but uh, box that has your records in it. And it says vinyl right on it, so... Any porch pirates in your area, you may want to be careful with that. Uh, send it to a P.O. box or post office, whatever. Maybe your workplace. I always get nervous about that. And I haven't had anything stolen yet. I'm knocking on wood for those who can't hear it. But it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb more than an Amazon package or you know, a typical UPS uh, package would or a FedEx package. So just a heads up. Anyway, so I cracked this thing open. There's, uh, yep, there's three records in there. It was awesome. And there was a little note that fell out with it. And I'll tell you what, it's pretty cool when you get a handwritten letter to you. I really thought that was an authentic, uh, something different. Because the loot crates give you stuff. And every now and then you get a printed letter in there. But it's printed and it's like a computer just spits your name out and types it up. So... Uh, The letter reads, Hey Vox, welcome. For your first box, I got you the new album Weather by Tycho. Uh, The first Tycho album that has vocals on it, and it pays off beautifully. Next is some music from the hipster teen duo uh, Vanseer. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, but hey, I don't know. And the record's actually on a white and blue splattered um, plastic vinyl press, which is awesome. So when you put it on there... Kind of looks like this paint mess spinning around on your on your uh, turntable, and um, oh, she says it's a true piece of artwork. And finally, the fourth album by Hundredth, and their melodic hardcore riffs will set you in the mood. Enjoy Elizabeth, and then they have like I think a little identification code underneath it. So, being curated to my Spotify is a very very hard uh, job. <laughs> if you're trying to figure out what to give a guy who listens to almost anything. 
Uh, my Spotify for 2019 wrap up was uh, the top 10 was featuring uh, mainly metal bands and albums with the throw in of a couple of rap albums that I like to listen to and um, some lighter rock and a lo-fi album, which funny enough, and this sounds super douchey and I haven't really put this out, but uh, my, my, fa- my top listened song was actually one of the songs that I produced and I produced lo fi stuff on the side just for fun and kind of just put it out there. And it was one of those. So I'm sure that had a little bit of influence on where the uh, tastes were going when Elizabeth was picking out my vinyl. Uh, so the first album, I, do- I dove right into it. I am a fan of Tycho, actually. Uh, my first album that I actually just st- accidentally stumbled upon years ago was Dive. I think that's 2011. 2010, 2011, I should have done my research, and I apologize. But a guy, uh, I knew he was a single producer named Scott Hansen, and I really enjoyed like his stuff. I never got to see him live. He did tour around a few times in Detroit, but I wasn't able to go see them at the time. And I say them because he plays with the band. Um, but he is, oh, man. I re-listened to Dive after I listened to Weathered today, and it's just so warm. It the, the whole album is warm, and it's nostalgic for me now, but it has this really crisp sound. And uh, Weather is from 2019, and uh, it's up for a Grammy, actually, for uh, Best Electronic Slash Dance Album. And although I wouldn't call this a dance album, it is pretty electronic, which is uh, a nice touch for uh, Scott to throw in. Because before it was electronic music, it was still pretty, I don't know, spacey, uh, kind of lo-fi, minimal is a way I would describe how his music was the you know for dive at that time that I was listening to that album very minimal and I really enjoyed that uh, this album weather though features vocals for the first time ever by Tycho because he's never had uh, vocals on any of his albums obviously and it's a by uh, the, the the gal who sings on it her name is Saint Sinner and I think that obviously just a sage name I couldn't find much about her I did a little bit of research just to figure out if she's been on anything else or if she was from another band but she's just a vocalist and a songwriter and a producer from L A and um, it's it takes a little bit of a turn on the album when her voice is is popping up because you're less focused now at least for me you're less focused on uh, the music behind it, and you're listening to her voice, and she has a good voice, actually. I didn't mind listening to it. There was a couple of songs I was like, eh, I don't know if it's vibing with me because of either her voice or the music. It was too much at, at times. Um, I think there was only two times where I was like, Ugh, I don't know how I feel about this, but it, this album is really poppy. Um, still experimental, and he stays really minimal with it, but it is poppy. There's a couple more dance songs uh, on there than anything and like I said I don't know if I would classify this as a dance album uh, can I, when I think of dance uh, in the electronic uh, genre I'm thinking like Dead Mouse and Daft Punk and uh, you know I, I don't say Skrillex but Skrillex for some reason pops in my mind but overall this album is really good it's about a just under a half hour long and it, it didn't feel like it it chugged right through really quickly and I, I give this one on the Vox scale rating a 7 out of 10 uh, overall because although I am a fan of Tycho, I don't know how much I was a fan of there being a, uh, singing on the album. But overall, it was nice. It was a nice album to listen to. Uh, the next one from Van Seer, which is uh, uh, their album Young... Or I'm sorry, Angel Youth. I thought it was Young Angel, but it's Angel Youth. Uh, it's their 2018 album, and from all I can tell, they only have released one or two singles in 2019, and I'm assuming that uh, an album's short to come in 2020, so we'll find out uh, quickly with that, because I'll probably want to review that one, uh, because this album really, really piqued my interest in this band. I have never heard of them, um, which is surprising, because like I said before, I'm kind of a hipster, and I figured that these guys would have popped up in my suggested at some point, but they haven't. So uh, I was pretty excited to listen to something that not only I didn't know, but I was enjoying, and it sounds really, really good on vinyl. This is another pretty warm-sounding band. They're like, if I had to explain them in a a two-word genre category, it was uh, atmospheric pop. Um, 
according to their band camp on the tags, they have Dream Pop in there, which I don't even know what the hell that is, but I guess it's kind of along the lines of Bedroom Pop. And the only reason I know Bedroom Pop is because there's a gal named uh, Claro, and she's famous for her one song, Pretty Girl, which uh, <laughs> the music video came out of it, and it's just her filming herself on a webcam, dancing and lip syncing to her song. And it's 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 a fun tune. I enjoy listening to that actually, uh, but that's the only song I knew you know by her that she's famous for. But she, I looked her up again, and she has millions of listens on and views on all of her other YouTube and her Spotify songs and stuff. But uh, these guys give off a really really nice lo-fi vibe with the bedroom pop vibe that I got later on in the album, and that's what reminded me of Claro. Um, it also kind of reminds me of the minimalist. Um, Tycho, where it's kind of spacey, really atmospheric, um, where you kind of just kind of get lost in the music for a moment. And I actually found myself daydreaming while I was listening to it. And that's really nice when you have an album that you can sit down to and just daydream for a minute and then come back and not have missed anything and still still feel the same way and not have to rewind the song because you missed you know your favorite part or whatever. It's just really nice atmosphere. I, w- I would put this album on if we were hanging out with a bunch of people in my house and we just wanted like music in the background because to me with metal if i miss like a favorite part that has a breakdown or my favorite scream or or whatever it may be i always rewind it and and re-listen to that part and um my girlfriend natasha does the same thing with with her music because she she's into top 40 stuff but you know with whether it be demi lovato or, or taylor swift or the jonas brothers that i know she is listening to maybe not so much taylor swift but um she would go back and, and re-listen to the parts that uh, she missed because she enjoys them. So anyone who is uh, interested in, in kind of lo-fi, atmospheric, uh, bedroom slash dream pop, if you're into those uh, really deep and specific subgenres, uh, Van Seer's 2018 album, Angel Youth, definitely a listen. Uh, the third album, which is by a band called Hundredth, piqued my uh, attention in the letter because she said it's their fourth studio album and their melodic hardcore riffs will set you in the mood and I'm a hardcore fan I love hardcore I love punk music and I was really really excited to get into this one because I was like okay she knows I'm into some lo-fi electronic style stuff because of the um, stuff I've listened to and the stuff that I listen to with my girlfriend in the car, because I've made a side note here, I've made a playlist that's appropriate for car rides with Natasha because she's not a metalhead, and she does like uh, you know classic rock, but that's not something I could constantly listen to. So I tried to always add new things, but it's all pretty much poppy and, and uh, indie rock, indie dance stuff. But then this pops up, and I was like, okay, cool. We're going to get a... a Two lighter albums and then a heavy album. And I must say that I am extremely disappointed in this pick. Um, They are a post-rock or punk, maybe a noise rock, uh, atmospheric rock um, band. I I didn't really do much digging into them after I got uninterested. I listened to about the first four songs of the album, and only one of the four I said was like, okay, decent. Um... It kind of reminds me of a band called The Contortionist, but The Contortionist, they do a lot of screaming. There's a lot of breakdown stuff, kind of like bass drop stuff with the breakdowns. Um, they're pretty heavy. They're almost math rocky when the, with their breakdowns, but they are really have these really beautiful space vocals or spacey vocals um, that kind of fill the room style vocals that I enjoy. And that's what the vocal style in this album reminded me of. And if you don't know who The Contortionist is, uh, look up their album language and if you're not a metal fan please 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 give this a chance uh language is a is a fantastic album and that is actually going to be in a later video i'm already starting to write the review for that one and um we'll go into that too because that album really touches me in a, in a music sense but um this album rare by hundredth is very atmospheric um and I would really have liked to see a little bit more different sounds pumped into this album. Because after like the third or fourth song, I just felt, I didn't know, because I wasn't like watching, obviously, I'm playing this on vinyl. I'm, I'm not watching when the track is changing. And I was like, kind of like messing around with stuff on my computer and, 
and getting distracted not listening to the music, and I couldn't tell when the songs were changing. They all started to sound the same, which really disappointed me. Uh, it was not melodic, in my opinion, nor hardcore, and their riffs were incredibly boring and filled with reverb and, and very uh, big room style masterings where it sounds like stuff's kind of echoing. Uh, again, just my opinion on it. I didn't, I didn't like the album. It's probably not something that I would suggest anyone listening to who are into um, more post-punk, post-rock style music. Um, they're really noisy, and I guess the last two things I reviewed were noise rock, stoner rock albums, but this had nothing to do with it, that style of music. There was just, It was just not anything that um, I was hyped up about so a little sad on that oh i forgot to mention that um angel youth by van Seer. i gave that an eight out of ten um hundredths rare i gave a five out of ten it's not the worst thing i've ever heard it's not country thank god but it just mm, i didn't like it i was bummed out by it but uh now i want to kind of just go into my overall review of this subscription service this is the first box i got and I have to say, I would give this a solid 8 out of 10 for a subscription service overall. It definitely knocked uh, Loot Crate's last 10 boxes right out of the water. Um, I got two things out of three that I enjoyed deeply and am excited to show on my shelf of vinyl. Where the Loot Crate subscription, just for reference, I've gotten maybe one and or two things out of the 7 to 10 things in a Loot Crate that I was like, yay, I can kind of show this off and brag about it. And it's always a shirt that you get in there. Um, or actually, recently, it's always been a shirt. And even then, some of the shirts I actually give to Natasha for sleepwear because I would never wear the shirt ever. So this is definitely something I'm going to continue. Um, every month when I get a new one, I will do a three-album real quick review just like this one and rate the box overall. I don't know if that interests anyone over is for like the vinyl uh, subscription service, but maybe you'd be interested in the albums that come in it, and I can explain those. Um, but I give the first box an 8 out of 10 easily. Um, I would suggest this for vinyl collectors, especially if you listen to very specific types of music. You can really narrow it down in uh, the genre picks that they have on the website uh, when you sign up for vinyl. And to me, honestly, 40 bucks a month isn't really that bad because I found myself spending like 15 to 25 sometimes 30 to $35 on one record, where this one I got three. One I knew who they were, had not listened to the album, Tycho's album, and the other one I was, I, I had no idea who they were. I mean, obviously I didn't know who 100th was either, but uh, I was pretty blown away by it. I hope this is some information that you could take from just a normal average guy consumer. Uh, I did actually, another side note here, a review as a normal average guy consumer on the uh, TF4 podcast page, which we are on a indefinite hiatus right now, which 2020 might you know, bring us back. I don't know. But I bought a pair of the indestructible shoes. So if you're interested in hearing another guy ramble on and want to see my face, you can just uh, YouTube that. TF4 Podcast, and it's like the most watched video on there. Anyways, uh, I'm just a normal dude, and I think that this was interesting in uh, the way that it's music-focused, and I could do a review on two things, music and a subscription service. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening. If you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. Uh, share with your friends. If you're enjoying stuff and you are interested in uh, discovering new music and like sharing music, uh, send it around. I would really appreciate it. It's pretty cool seeing uh, 36 views on uh, the Bullies uh, video, and I still listen to them almost every day now too. So if you have any suggestions, you can leave a comment on the video. I would love to listen to what you have and maybe review it. Or you can shoot me an email at over overopinionatedpodcast at gmail.com. And I'll be checking that as well. And I'll shoot you a line back with uh, questions, comments, or anything like that. So thanks again for listening. My name is Vox. This has been Over Opinionated Podcast, the music review podcast. I'm going to try to label that a little bit, considering the name doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I, I don't know. Goodbye. Okay,